Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, colleagues. It is my honor to introduce to you today Reverend Pyong Chol Han as today's Pastor of the Day. Reverend Han has been the senior pastor at the Korean Central Presbyterian Church of Atlanta for over nine years. Before he was called to be a minister, he was a human rights activist in South Korea. He attended Yonsei University, one of the most prestigious colleges in, in Korea, before immigrating to the United States in 2002 to attend McCormick Theological Seminary in Chicago, Illinois. Today, he lives in Peachtree Corners with his wife. His daughter will be graduating from Emory's Business School this May, and his son will be graduating from the University of Georgia. Without further ado, Reverend Hahn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for inviting me as the chaplain of the day and Representative uh, Sam Park for your kind words of introduction. I also would like to express my deep gratitude to the members of the Georgia House of Representatives for making this day, making this special day for Korean Americans possible. When I was asked several weeks ago to come and preach today, I just said yes without hesitation because saying yes is my philosophy of life. Let me tell you how this came to be. I came to this country in the summer of 2002 for my master's program at McCormick Theological Seminary in Chicago. Not long after my first semester started, I was asked to preach for the community service led by the students. I was stunned, but I couldn't say no because I was so afraid to speak English at the time. What an irony. I had preached in English because I couldn't speak English confidently enough to say no. <laughs> <laughs> Yet, it turned out to be enormous blessings in many ways for me. For that sermon, I became the recipient of the preaching award with a $2,000 scholarship. I also got a call from a church in Indiana because the president of the seminary recommended, strongly recommended me to the position after listening to my sermon. That's how I ended up becoming a minister in this country. And I'm standing here today to preach in English once again with great expectation. Here is the thing, when you are asked to do something, please do not say no, just say yes. And I guarantee that you will experience tremendous blessings beyond your imagination. I have another story. I used to live in downtown Seoul, South Korea before I came to this country at age 40. Since my neighborhood was in the middle of many tourist destinations, I sometimes saw tourists holding a map and looking around. I could tell that they were lost. Whenever I saw those foreigners, I approached them and asked, may I help you? It was one of the few English sentences that I could say fluently at the time. But soon after, I realized that my English wasn't good enough to help them to get there. I did not give up though. Instead, I told them, follow me. Sometimes it took me 30 minutes or more to walk them to where they wanted to go. But I boldly say, follow me. I was, a help, I was able to help many people with my limited English. May I help you? Follow me. Those two simple sentences were enough. Every one of you in this room, as public servants, may have felt that you didn't have enough resources or the power to help people and community. But I believe 
that it's not about the money, time, or resources. What you need is just caring heart. In the late 19th and early 20th century, Korea was one of the poorest countries in the world. During those years, many American missionaries came to my country bringing the good news of Jesus Christ. They came to a country they had never been to from halfway around the world and helped people they had never met before. Enduring language barriers, cultural differences, and poor living conditions, they tried hard, taught, teach Korean people faith, hope, and love. In 1950, the Korean War broke out, and many young, brave men and women in uniform from United States came to my country to save my country and to save freedom. The war ravaged everything. When the war ended in 1953, there was nothing left but freedom. Thanks to the brave soldiers who sacrificed their lives. With that freedom, the Korean people were able to rebuild our country from the ashes. Now, South Korea has become the world's 12th largest economy. South Korea is one of the few countries in the world that produce automobiles and is one, number one in shipbuilding and a front runner in cutting edge industries. South Korea is the only country that has been turned from, from a foreign aid recipient into a donor country. South Korea is also the second largest missionary sending country in the world after the US. American missionaries just said yes to God's call and American men and women in uniform said yes to their country's call to protect peace and freedom. Had they not chosen to answer the call, had they not said yes, I would not be here standing, I would not be standing here today, nor standing where I stand every day. I know that and I honor that. Hospitality and kindness, those two words I believe represent the American spirit. I have met many Americans who have this spirit since I came to this country, and I'm very grateful for that. The 133rd Psalm says, how good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters live together in unity. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. I'm here today as a proud Korean American and proud Georgian to encourage you to say yes. Don't be discouraged by the lack of resources. You can make a big difference in your community and in this society with the hospitality and kindness. When we stay encouraged and our hope rises, we find ourselves with greater humility to listen to one another greater ability to love, to find unity within our diversity. So I want to encourage you all here today to stay increased as leaders. May your faith deepen, your love grow, and hope is raised in your lives because in your leadership, it will be your gift to the people of our state. Will you join me in prayer? Lord, today we offer prayers for all who exercise leadership around us. I want to lift up our state representatives and leaders who make decisions about everything from the school system to the world system in our communities. God, grant to your grace so that they might make wise decisions in matters that will have an impact on the education of the children of our community in matters that will have an impact on our environment, in matters that will have an impact on our safety, 
in matters that will have an impact on how we live with and relate one another. Give us wisdom and courage to find a common ground and be in unity with one another, no matter the differences we have. Help us to stay encouraged as leaders so that we may be uh, extensions of grace, mercy, and hope to those we serve and those we lead. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <coughs>